Latino, okay? Right. But I got mixed, mixed kind of whatever you want to call it. My girl next to me, got, we got mixed nephews and cousins. Yeah. And come on, my, look at me, man. I'm a mother. Right, yeah. Yeah, man, yeah, you look mixed, man. But look, so I want to <laughs> get back. This is part two of the video with Not Without Alonzo, man. So, um... You were telling us about your brother, and it got it, it got cut off. But uh, you say your brother had dual My citizenship. My brother had dual citizenship in uh, in Anthens Park and with Shotgun Crips. Right. Okay. Okay. He had he was respected and loved by both of them. They know where he lived at, knew where his mama lived. But he went to school at Gardena High School, and he ran with the shotguns. And a few times, some of the shotguns came to leave after dark. He had to negotiate their safe passage. Right. You know, and uh, I thanked him for that because you know. I, I didn't know nobody like that. I went to Cartagena High School for a minute, but I didn't stick around long enough to get to know nobody. So, right. But because I had the club, they gave him a pass, gave me a pass. Yes, sir. So now we're going to go back to the, the, the dressing and, and putting on these outfits, man. And like I say, I've seen different outfits from uh, Ohio players and uh, Commodores and all that. So were you guys doing the same thing, man, with the uh, world-class wrecking crew? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I tell people you have to understand is, World Class Wrecking Crew was such a pioneering group. There were no other rap show, no other rap groups on our show. We, we, we opened up for the Barcades. We opened up for the Mary Jane Girls. We opened up for, uh, um, uh, I forgot the name of the group, but a bunch of acts. We, our first tours was all R&B acts. So wasn't no tennis shoes jumping on the stage back then. Wasn't no jeans jumping on the stage back then. Everybody has something crazy on. I mean, right. think about George Clinton. Think about the Barcades. Think about right. Ohio players. I mean, even when we did uh, local acts like Ready for the World and Troop, yeah. they all had on some shit like that. So it wasn't world class wrecking crew. Only reason why Drake get tripped on because he went from wrecking crew to try to be a gangster. Right. You, nobody else made that transition. The only person that ever made that transition, other than Dre, was Tupac. From Digital Underground. When he right. was from Digital Underground, he'll tell you, he danced in his drawers just so we could have a place to sleep at night. Okay? Right. But he never dissed, he never dissed World, uh, Digital Underground. Right. Dre tried to, he tried to run, he tried to avoid that. And right. you can't, you can't run from your past. Too much digital <laughs> shit going on around here. You know, you can't, you, you, too many pictures floating around. Right. So, you know, that, that's, that's been a problem. People use it against him because he didn't like it. Right. So, all right. So let me ask you this, and I'm, I know you're short on time or whatever, man. Uh, out of all the music you've done and all the music that came through your, your studio, um, what is the most memorable song, man, whether it was uh, with NWA, whether it was with uh, World Class, or whether you was helping another uh, writer or producer? Man, you know what? I've always, I've always been a fan of my own stuff. Uh, I think probably the, the, the biggest song we ever had was Turn Off the Lights. And the reason why that song would mean, mean so much to me, that was the last song we did together. Right. That was the last song for World Class Wrecking Crew as a, as a group. Uh, we never performed that song as a, on the stage as a group, never. We, once that song was released, we broke up, and Michelle, they never sang it with us, although she always sings it in her shows, but she never sang it with me, Dre, and Yella. I never performed it with her. So that song has a, has a special spot in my heart when it comes to um, you know, World Class Wrecking Crew. All right, so is there any other music that was produced in there oh, in man. your studio? Yeah, uh, Compton's Most Wanted, uh, Afro Man, uh, PG-13, uh, some, uh, some of the early stuff the Cube did. The, it, it was, you know, we, my studio has been pretty much uh, Candyman. I got Candyman's Masters right now from uh, uh, Knocking Boots. So oh, okay. my studio has been a, was, was legendary for giving people opportunity. You know, Candyman, Johnny J. That's Johnny J. Produced that. Yeah, Johnny J. Yeah. Johnny J. was one of Johnny J. was was one of the homies back in the day. Uh, hung in the studio, hung out with Dre, learned how to uh, right. uh, work the SP12, SP1200. My boy Fila Al bought it for me and took Johnny, gave it to Johnny J. to uh, to operate to produce Tupac's uh, Tupac's yeah. music. Now, Johnny J, man, he was a real producer, man, and uh, may heaven keep him well. Uh, man, I'm sorry that he um, even passed away because he was a real humble dude, man. He's cool, one of the coolest tests you ever want to meet, man. Yeah. Um, is there anybody else that uh, we don't know came through there, man? Anybody else who? You know, as long as that lights in my face, I'm going to draw a blank. But, um, <laughs> oh, man, now that I think about it, man, everybody, Tone, tone Loke. Um, Funky Cold Medina Funky, or Wild we Wild didn't record, we, They didn't record it there, but my studio because I had a early I had a studio, in before a lot of cats did, and Dre was giving away studio time like it was uh, flyers to a party. Uh, DJ Pooh would come through there. Uh, uh, Tone Loke, Young MC, um, all the cats from the '80s. At some point in time, 
found their way into my studio. Okay. Right. Some of them recorded, some of them didn't. Battle Cat, I mean, he's one of the, uh, oh, one of the yeah. legendary cats. I got his first record on my wall right now. Right. Uh, DJ in effect. So, you know, the legacy of my studio, my legacy has gone on for quite some time. And Dre wasn't the last, he wasn't the, he wasn't the last cat that blew up out of my studio. I got some new artists I'm working with. I'm looking into uh, to my nonprofit to change the narrative of today's hip hop. Not so much negativity, not so much drug promotion, and damn sure not so much gang promotion. I mean, this yes, thing sir. behind me, man, that's that. that I first thought it scared the shit out of me. I thought it was a Halloween thing. I said, ain't no Halloween thing. No, that's, that's real. real. Them is real life people who have lost their lives. Either their lives were taken or their lives were lost. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's truly, uh, that's real. That's yeah. real stuff. So, yes. All right. And that's why I'm here, folks, to try and make, uh, do my part to make a difference. Well, you're not trying, brother. You're doing your part to make a difference. So, appreciate you. Much love. NWA Always. is not without Alonzo. Peace.